435, a momentous event took place within the early Christian church as Nestorius, the former ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople, was exiled by Roman Emperor Theodosius II. Nestorius, a prominent theological figure, had propagated a controversial doctrine known as Nestorianism. This doctrine emphasized the distinction between the divine and human natures of Christ, suggesting they existed as two separate persons within Jesus. This theological position generated fierce debates and divisions within the church. The Council of Ephesus, convened in 431, condemned Nestorius' teachings as heretical, leading to his deposition from the Patriarchate. Subsequently, Theodosius II ordered Nestorius to be exiled to a monastery in Egypt, where he spent the rest of his life in seclusion. Despite his exile, Nestorianism continued to gain traction in the eastern regions, leading to the establishment of the Nestorian Church, which persisted for centuries. The exile of Nestorius and the condemnation of Nestorianism significantly impacted the development of Christian theology in the Byzantine Empire and beyond. It further deepened the schism between Eastern and Western Christianity, as the Eastern Church grappled with the implications of Nestorius' teachings. The Council of Ephesus and its decisions played a crucial role in defining Orthodox Christian doctrine, reinforcing the belief in the unity of Christ's divine and human natures, known as the hypostatic union. Today, the Nestorian Church, also known as the Assyrian Church of the East, continues to exist as a distinct Christian tradition within communities in the Middle East and beyond. The theological debates and decisions of the early church continue to shape the beliefs and practices of various Christian denominations worldwide. Nestorius' exile marked a pivotal moment in the history of Christianity, leaving a lasting impact on the course of Christian theology and ecclesiastical divisions. The year 1031 witnessed a significant milestone in the history of Christianity in Norway, as Olaf II, the King of Norway, was officially recognized as a saint by Grimkettle, the Bishop of Selsey in England. Olaf, also known as Saint Olaf, played a crucial role in the Christianization of Norway, promoting the spread of Christianity in the region during his reign. Olaf II ruled Norway from 1015 to 1028 and was instrumental in consolidating the country under Christian governance. His conversion to Christianity was a pivotal moment in Norwegian history as it marked a shift from the traditional Norse pagan beliefs to the acceptance of Christianity as the state religion. Olaf's sainthood was closely associated with his martyrdom during the Battle of Stiklestad in 1030. Despite his efforts to Christianize the country, he faced opposition from various factions, leading to his death in battle. His supporters regarded him as a martyr for the Christian faith, attributing miracles to his intercession after his death. Grimkettle, the English Bishop of Selsey, was responsible for leading the process of Olaf's canonization. He collected testimonies and evidence of miracles attributed to Olaf's intercession, which played a crucial role in the recognition of Olaf as a saint by the Catholic Church. St. Olaf's canonization had a profound impact on the Christianization of Norway and the promotion of Christianity throughout Scandinavia. Numerous churches and pilgrimage sites dedicated to St. Olaf were established in Norway and neighboring countries, becoming centers of religious devotion and cultural identity. For centuries, St. Olaf remained a revered figure in Norway and beyond, and his feast day, July 29th, continues to be celebrated by many Christians, especially in Scandinavia. Pilgrimages to the Nidaros Cathedral in Trondheim, where his remains are believed to be buried, have been undertaken by devout believers seeking spiritual solace and blessings. The cult of St. Olaf also influenced the Norwegian monarchy, with subsequent kings seeking legitimacy by aligning themselves with his legacy. The medieval church in Norway played a crucial role in strengthening the Christian faith and consolidating royal authority, and St. Olaf became an emblem of national unity and piety. Today, St. Olaf's influence can still be seen in Norway's cultural heritage, where he is celebrated as the patron saint of the nation. His sainthood reflects the enduring impact of his reign and his efforts to promote Christianity in Norway, making him an essential figure in the religious and historical narrative of the country.
In 1492, the world witnessed a historic event that would forever alter the course of history. Christopher Columbus, an Italian explorer, set sail from the port of Palos de la Frontera in Spain on his groundbreaking expedition. Backed by the Catholic monarchs of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella, Columbus aimed to find a western route to Asia, in particular India, to expand trade and spread Christianity. However, his voyage would prove to be much more momentous than he could have ever imagined. Columbus's expedition consisted of three ships, the Santa Maria, the Pinta, and the Niña, and was manned by a crew of about 90 men. After departing from Palos de la Frontera, the ships made a stop in the Canary Islands for final preparations before embarking on the transatlantic journey into the unknown. For over two months, Columbus and his crew sailed across the vast Atlantic Ocean, facing numerous challenges and uncertainties. Despite the crew's mounting anxieties and fears, Columbus remained resolute in his belief that they were on the verge of discovering new lands. On October 12, 1492, their perseverance bore fruit when a lookout on the Pinta, Rodrigo de la Triana, sighted land. Columbus had finally reached the islands of the Caribbean, specifically Guanahani, which he named San Salvador. This historic encounter marked the beginning of European exploration and colonization in the New World, initiating the era of the Columbian Exchange. Columbus's voyages opened the door for further exploration and exploitation of the Americas by European powers. This contact between the Old World and the New World led to the exchange of goods, animals, crops, and disease, significantly impacting both hemispheres, ecosystems, and cultures. While Columbus's voyages are celebrated for their impact on global history, they also brought about devastating consequences for the indigenous populations of the Americas. European colonization led to the decimation of native populations through disease, enslavement, and conflict. Despite controversy surrounding Columbus's legacy in modern times, his expedition's significance in reshaping the world cannot be denied. The Columbian Exchange facilitated the exchange of ideas, technologies, and cultures leading to long-term changes to both Europe and the Americas. This transformative era laid the foundation for the age of exploration and the establishment of European dominance in the New World. In 1678, the French explorer Robert de La Salle achieved a significant maritime feat that would leave an indelible mark on the exploration and trade routes of North America. La Salle oversaw the construction of Le Griffon, a ship destined to become the first European vessel to be built and sailed on the Great Lakes. La Salle, an intrepid explorer and trader, recognized the strategic importance of the Great Lakes region as a potential gateway to the western interior of North America. With the aim of expanding French influence and trade in the continent, he envisioned the construction of a ship that could navigate the vast inland seas and facilitate commerce with native tribes and European outposts. The construction of Le Greffon took place on the shores of the Niagara River, a location deemed ideal for the assembly of the vessel. Completed in the summer of 1679, the ship set sail under La Salle's command, heading westward towards Lake Erie and Lake Huron. After reaching the northernmost point of Lake Michigan, the ship disappeared, and its fate remains a mystery to this day. While Le Griffon's ultimate destiny remains a historical enigma, its construction and journey left a lasting legacy. La Salle's ambitious endeavor paved the way for further exploration and European presence in the Great Lakes region, leading to the establishment of crucial trade routes that connected the St. Lawrence River with the heart of North America. The successful voyage of Le Greffon demonstrated the navigability of the Great Lakes, sparking increased interest in the region among European powers. The French continued to explore and establish forts and trading posts, further solidifying their presence in the New World. The loss of Le Greffon did not deter future European explorers and traders from navigating the Great Lakes. The French, British, and later American explorers continued to use the waterways for trade, exploration, and expansion. The Great Lakes became vital conduits for the fur trade and later industrial transportation, playing a crucial role in shaping the economic and cultural development of the North American continent. In 
In the summer of 1936, the world's attention turned to Berlin, Germany, as the city hosted the 11th Olympiad, the Olympic Games of 1936. The event became a stage for both sporting prowess and political maneuvering, as Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime sought to showcase their ideology of Aryan racial superiority. However, one man would shatter the Nazis' claims and leave an indelible mark on Olympic history. Jesse Owens, an African-American track and field athlete from the United States. Jesse Owens, born in Alabama in 1913, had already established himself as a world-class athlete before the Berlin Olympics. He had set multiple records and earned numerous accolades, including winning the NCAA championships and the U.S. Olympic trials in the 100-meter dash and the long jump. At the Berlin Olympics, Owens faced fierce competition and a hostile atmosphere. The Nazi regime sought to exploit the games as a showcase of their perceived racial supremacy, but Owens would go on to dominate the track events, proving the fallacy of their claims. On August 3, 1936, Owens lined up against Ralph Metcalf, his American teammate and friend, in the 100-meter dash. Despite the pressure and propaganda surrounding the event, Owens remained focused and determined. He burst from the starting blocks, displaying incredible speed and power, and crossed the finish line in just 10.3 seconds, earning him the gold medal. Owens' victory was a remarkable achievement, but it was his actions off the track that added to his legendary status. During the long jump competition, Owens was challenged by a German jumper named Luce Long. Rather than succumbing to the rivalry, Long offered Owens a piece of advice, leading to Owens' successful qualifying jump. The two athletes developed a friendship that transcended national boundaries, symbolizing the spirit of the Olympic Games. In total, Owens won four gold medals at the Berlin Olympics, claiming victory in the 100-meter dash, 200-meter dash, long jump, and 4x100-meter relay. His triumphs stood as a testament to the power of individual talent and determination, defying the oppressive ideology of the Nazi regime. Jesse Owens' achievements at the Berlin Olympics sent a powerful message of racial equality and human dignity. His victories not only disproved the Nazi notion of Aryan supremacy, but also challenged racial prejudices prevalent in the United States at the time. Owens became a symbol of courage and resilience, an inspiration for African Americans and oppressed communities worldwide. After returning to the United States, Owens continued to face discrimination and limited opportunities. Despite his athletic fame, he struggled financially for many years. However, Owens remained an influential figure, advocating for civil rights and equality in sports and society. In the decades that followed, he received numerous honors and recognition for his contributions to athletics and social progress. Naval history witnessed an extraordinary achievement as the USS Nautilus, the world's first nuclear-powered submarine, accomplished a groundbreaking feat by becoming the first vessel to complete a submerged transit beneath the geographical North Pole. This momentous event marked a new era in naval engineering, reshaping submarine capabilities and global strategic dynamics during the Cold War. The USS Nautilus was a product of remarkable technological innovation. Powered by a pressurized water reactor, it eliminated the need for conventional diesel engines, which significantly extended its underwater endurance and operational range. This nuclear propulsion system not only enhanced the submarine's performance, but also set the stage for the development of subsequent nuclear-powered vessels. Under the command of Captain William R. Anderson, the USS Nautilus set sail from its home port in Groton, Connecticut on July 23, 1958. The submarines embarked on an arduous journey through the Arctic Ocean, navigating icy waters and unpredictable conditions. With ice overhead and depth charges sounding, this crew skillfully maneuvered the submarine, pushing the boundaries of submarine warfare. On August 3rd, after nearly two weeks of navigating the ice, the USS Nautilus successfully reached the geographic North Pole. The achievement demonstrated the submarine's remarkable capabilities and the potential of nuclear propulsion for extending underwater travel. It also showcased the United States' technological prowess during the Cold War, providing a strategic advantage over potential adversaries. The success of the Nautilus's transpolar voyage inspired further advancements in naval technology, spurring a race among global powers to develop and deploy nuclear-powered submarines. 
These submarines played a pivotal role in the arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union, shaping the dynamics of Cold War tensions and mutual deterrence. The USS Nautilus continued its service, setting numerous records and contributing significantly to naval operations. Its achievements marked a turning point in naval warfare and confirmed the strategic significance of nuclear propulsion. The innovation of the nuclear-powered submarine heralded a golden age of undersea exploration and warfare, establishing submarines as crucial assets in the global defense landscape.